Let's stand and turn in our Bibles to Matthew chapter 24, uh, verse 1. The second coming of Christ is the simple title of this message, part four. It's a title that Dr. Billy Graham gave this message so many years ago. I believe it was one message for him, him maybe two, maybe three, I don't know. Uh, but we're breaking it down and, and, and we'll be here a while by the grace of God. And we're giving God the glory and giving God the honor and the praise and uh, remembering at the same time uh, giving God the honor, giving Jesus Christ the honor and both the, the praise and remembering their servant, Billy Graham. Uh, excuse the expression, but who did the doggone thing? He flat did it by the grace of God. Preached in nearly every country in the world the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Preached to multiplied millions the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they don't talk about it, but I believe millions were saved. <clears throat> and I'm giving God the honor, the praise, and the glory, and remembering their servant Billy Graham by preaching an adaptation of one of his powerful messages and this needs to be changed here uh, everywhere is honoring and giving God and Jesus Christ the glory and remembering like that fix that fix that everywhere turn in your Bibles beloved and to my friends and to my enemies, and to my frenemies in between. The Bible reads in Matthew 24, 1, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, the word verily means truly, make no mistake about it, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And if you have seen the thrones of the temple, you must understand this was no f small feat. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And sadly, many have been deceived. But Evangelist Billy Graham was not a false prophet. He was a man of God 
who preached the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in the word of God accurately for the glory of God. It was never about him. Uh, Daniel Ezekiel, it was always about the glory of God and lifting up Jesus Christ. And he shall hear of wars, and ye rather shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For many shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. For nation rather shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your holy word. It was true when Dr. Billy Graham read it so many years ago, and it is true today. And we give you the glory and the praise and honor for raising up godly men to preach the gospel uh, all around the world. And Billy Graham was one of your choice servants and we thank you for what you did through him. We remember him today as we give you the glory, all of the glory, the praise, and the honor as we share one of his messages. Uh, uh, in uh, an adapted fashion. And so, Lord, we pray that uh, through it all and through this message, by the power of your Holy Gospel, by the power of your Holy Spirit, lost souls would be saved uh, through the words spoken so long ago, ago by one of your servants, Billy Graham, he being dead, yet speaketh. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, and for his sake, amen. You may be seated. Right here, you're too close to that. Right here. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Billy Graham, who is now home with the Lord, I am sure enjoying his reward and being with his good thing, his wife again, Ruth Graham Bell, who is just as uh, significant in the Billy Graham ministry as he is in the sense that she took care of their children. She was another enforcer so that her husband could go around the world and preach the gospel, not go around and have around the world and have fun, but to go around the world and preach the gospel. His wife, Ruth Graham Bell, sacrificed her life alone many, many days with those children, raising those children, praying with those children, and now they are reunited. And there's nothing like an original match between a man and a woman Outside of God's love, there's no greater love. And Ruth Graham Bell loved her husband, just like Barbara Bush loved her husband. And uh, Billy Graham, I assure you, loved Ruth Graham Bell. He didn't even think about 
getting with another woman after his wife died. Whereas most men, including me, that will be one of the first things I'll think about. I assure you. And so now they're in heaven. Glory be to God. They are together again, enjoying their reward. May God bless all of us uh, to end up like that. Amen, somebody. And Dr. Billy Graham said, We have seen the first sign which Jesus said would tell us that his second coming is near. That is what we talked about on last week, the revival of religion. All over the world, people are turning to religion and religious leaders and teachers for guidance. But what they find is false because it is, in most cases, it is only through Christ that the world can be saved. Uh, the second sign that Jesus gave is found in Matthew 24, 6. Jesus Christ said, Ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end, nay, but the end is not yet. Uh, Jesus Christ said that unto the end there will be wars and rumors of wars. He said kingdom shall rise against kingdom. Uh, some people predicted that great alliances would be formed to fight other great alliances which brought us to two great world wars and the possibility of a third world war. Christ is saying, in effect, war is a part of the degenerate economy. And because men refuse to go my way, there will not be real peace among the nations until I come back. Ladies and gentlemen, I think everyone, every one of us should do everything we can for peace. Every day of my life, Dr. Graham said, I pray for peace. We are told in the Holy Scriptures to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We are told to work for peace. We are told to pursue peace. And I believe that is why we should back every effort to bring peace. But after all is said and done, the very best efforts of man will fail. Men will still fight as long as there is hatred in the human heart. As long as there is prejudice in the human heart, men are going to fight. As long as there is greed in the human heart, men are going to fight. Jesus foresaw all of that. He knew that as long as human nature was separated from God Almighty, there would be wars and rumors of wars. And he said... When these great wars get devastating 
and worldwide the end is not far off and the question for you today ladies and gentlemen is are you ready for the end the only way you can get ready for the end is through Jesus Christ through placing your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior today and you are not ready for his second coming allow me to show you how you can get ready by trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior today first dear friend accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws the Bible says in Romans 3:23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have done wrong in our lives, haven't we? Secondly, accept the fact that there is a penalty, there is a punishment for sin always. The Bible says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. We die physically because of sin we have dead relationships because of sin we have dead dreams because of sin and then one day our soul will go to hell if we never trust Christ as Savior and die forever in the torments of hell if we don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ nobody is trying to scare you that's just biblical facts Jesus Christ said that in fact, Jesus Christ came and died on the cross for your sins to save you from hell and to heaven. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10:28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Hell is bad news. But I have some good news for you through the same Jesus Christ. For Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. All you have to do today, dear friend, is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, I know that there are some preachers and some churches who try to make it harder than what it is, and it's not hard. Jesus did all of the hard work. All you have to do is believe on him. The Bible says, and thou, you, shalt be saved. Then pray and ask him to save your soul, and he will save you. For Romans 10:13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Follow me in prayer right now. Call on his name right now, believing in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. Pray and ask him to save your soul, and he will save you. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I've done wrong in your sight I have broken your Ten Commandments for Jesus Christ's sake please have mercy and grace upon me and forgive me of all of my sins as I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ that he died for my sins was buried and rose again Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past and to turn from my evil ways and to follow you in the new life. 
In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you prayed that prayer with me and you meant it from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the word of God, you are now saved from hell and you are on your way to heaven. Welcome to the family of God, dear friend. Congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and receiving him as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10:9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Until next time, my beloved, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good, is our prayer. Let's all stand for our closing prayer.